There are some fantastic fisheries all around Britain and Fields End here in Cambridgeshire is a case in point. I'm Bob Nudd and this is one of my local haunts. So what better place could there be to share with you some tried and tested tips to get you on course pellet waggler fishing. There are two wonderfully well-established lakes to choose from with an abundance of carp and roach that are absolutely top-notch and I just can't wait to get started. Well, this is where I'm going to be fishing today. This particular water is called the pit. Don't know why it's called that. It's early autumn, but you'd think it was winter. It has been very warm, so the water temperatures are still up. And the method I'm going to be using today is, I'm going to be fishing up in the water with a pellet waggler. I'm fishing for carp, so I'm looking to get the fish up on the surface. And looking round, I really want to be with the wind on my back. I want to cast a good distance, feed the pellets nicely round the float, keep them tight. So I want to pick a swim, and it's important when you're fishing, pick the right swim. This method, you need the wind on your back. It makes it much, much easier. You imagine trying to cast into the wind here. You've got the wind coming towards you. You get no distance with the float or with the pellets either. So I'm looking for nice, calm waters where I can fish with ease and pleasure. I've already seen some carp on the surface, so it tells me that I'm going to catch, I'm sure I'm going to catch. And look at, looking at it, one or two splashing, they usually splash in the wind, but don't worry about that. Don't chase the fish, the feed will bring the fish to you. So if you see fish splashing, say, oh cool, we'll go and catch them over there. Don't worry about that fish where it's nice and comfortable, that's what we're looking for and we're going to have a great day. I've picked my swim, tackled up, got all the equipment set up. What bait am I going to be using today? I'm going to be fishing, the clue is I'm going to be fishing a pellet waggler, so pellets really are the main bait. And I've got a variety here, all, all different ones, and I'll tell you a little bit about them. These ones here are fish meal carp pellets it's it's compressed fish meal they're hard pellets this is for feeding mainly for feeding not so much for on the hook so i'll feed these to try to attract the carp into the area that i'm fishing and do this by the by the noise of the pellets hitting the water and the amount i've also got some six mil again but these are halibut pellets and they are slight, although they're six mil, if you look at them closely, let me try and get, can you see that they're both, they're called six mil, but these halibut ones are a little larger, so it's a bit windy today and I might find the bigger ones more accurate. So I've, I've got a choice of which ones to use. The slightly heavier ones will go further and make a bit more noise. So maybe I'll use them, I don't know. I haven't started fishing yet. So they're the main feed pellets. If I really want to make a lot of noise, then I'll use these eight millimeter ones. Now these are going to be the ones that I'm using on the hook, something like that. Especially when you're starting off fishing, these make a real bomb, bomb, bomb as they hit the water. So maybe I'll be feeding those, but everything is pellet orientated. And then I've got some other special halibut pellets for the hook. They're all, all different sizes really, some small ones, some large ones, some pre-drilled. You never know in fishing what you're going to need. This is gonna be my main attack today. It's an eight millimeter pellet. And I've got it fixed to the hook. It's not really fixed to the hook because it's on a hair rig. I've tied a band on the end of the hair rig and then got the band, can you see where it's holding the pellet in position? 
nice and simple way, but the hook is left completely exposed for, so that when the fish grabs, it sucks the hook in as well, and you hook it so, so easy. You don't even have to strike. I've got a hook length, then a swivel, and then up to the main pellet waggler, which is, it's a mushroom shape. And because of the shape, the fish can hook themselves. As they go to, to grab hold of the bait, it offers a lot of resistance near the top. And uh, the fish can easily hook themselves. I'm fishing a metre deep, but the lake is probably more than three metres deep. So I've got to get the fish up in the water. I've picked a marker on the far bank to cast to. So I'll cast and try and keep the direction of the cast the same all the time even in this wind, which makes it a little bit difficult. There. And it wants to be a distance where you can feed to. And you can get these pellets, these, I'm going to feed these slightly heavy ones because of this wind. Three or four pellets is enough. Oh, I, the float div dead. The fish are there already. Just float just gave a little, little bob, which tells you that there's fish around. I'm keep feeding these pellets, keep feeding them just round the floated area and every now and again just can you see that how I'm just moving the float that's not a fish that's me just moving that float trying to create a little bit of movement in the pellet you imagine as your pellets are falling through the water the fish are taking the bait and they grab hold of yours <laughs> Well, that didn't take long. Oh, it really is a deadly method. Just as long as you get the feeding right. And in this particular fishery, they're all quite good fish. You know, they're, they're, they range between probably six pound and 16 pound. I've got the clutch set on this reel, but I've also flicked off the back wind so that I can I like clutches, but they're not always, when you're on a smallish hook, they're not always the best. So this is why we go fishing. You know, when you hook, this is the first fish of the day. And when you hook that first fish, this is the pleasure that you get. There's one or two other anglers on the bank today as well. What sort of fishery it is. really asked really do scrap right on the top now this one just probably first fish of the day is probably only about maybe five pounds they're not usually oh it's still a nice fish I could just see the pellet still it in its mouth wow How about that? Well, it's not a, it's probably about four pound. It's probably one of the, one of the smaller carp in here, but it really is a beautiful fish. Just a greyish blue fish. So a particular, probably a strange species of mirror carp, but they do fight. Look at that massive tail, lovely fish. Let's go and have a look and see what's in my tackle box this week. This is a brilliant tool. It's called a loop tyre. I think it was originated by the weaving industry. If you take, so it's for forming small loops. If you take just a length of line, fold it over your finger there so you've got two pieces of line there. Take the bottom groove and put both pieces through that. Can you see that? And then just twist, just one twist. As you twist it, as you're coming round for the second time, then there's a little sharp point there. Just push that through and the loop goes inside here. To trap it, just put your finger on the top and then pull with your left hand. If you pull with your left hand, there, 
Incredible. Then just pull it tight. And look at that. A beautiful, beautiful, just a tiny loop, which you can use, say you're, you're using hook lengths and you're fishing loop to loop, you can use it. For hair rigs, it's brilliant. Just to, if you want a really, on hair rigs, you sometimes want a really tiny loop, it's perfect for that. So it's got lots of uses. And that looked quite complicated when I did it, but I'll show you in real time, let me just cut that, in real time, once you get used to it, it's so simple to use. This is in real time, how, how quick it is, you just form it, whiz it round, pull it through, bump, 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 and you've got a perfect tiny loop. How quick was that? So easy to use. And I'm straight into another one. It feels, feels like a bigger fish. It's already taken some line. <laughs> This is fabulous fishing. It really has whizzed off that one. Just casting and feeding. Feeding's the most important part, always is of fishing. Just getting the feed going in, getting the fish round and competing. And then they're on. Oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> this one. This one is taking so much line. I'm not going to have time. You'll have to come back after the break and see what it is. I'd come here for. Just about ready for the net. Oh, that is a biggie. <laughs> that really, oh, that really is a big, big fish. <laughs> what a lovely one. Must be probably. Let me just try and hold it up for the camera. Probably eight or 10 pounds. Beautiful, beautiful mirror carp. Gorgeous fish. I'll put it straight back. This is a difficult knot. How to tie a banded hair rig. Take a length of line, which is going to be your hook length, say about two foot. If you put the band just on that, that bend there, that's about the right length. This is the way I tie my hook lens, and it? it is a tough one. You take the line and form it in a loop, complete loop, like that. So you've got a big loop of line, you've got a little tag coming off here. And, and you get hold of this loop and you've got to work it down the shank. This is always a tough bit, it's getting this started. You have to wrap it over, work it down the shank, trap that, that little tag as you work it down. Two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, about 10 or 11 turns. Once you've wound down the shank, then trap that, that line with your finger and thumb and pull this tag, just pull it, I'm usually wet it as well while I pull it through. Just pull that tag all the way through. It's a brilliant knot, this one. I'll just get my pliers just to tighten up a little bit. Just to make sure it's on. And there you can see, get that line to come out just under the hook itself. You can see the little turns down. And all you do is put the pellet through that band and the hook itself is completely free for when the fish grab hold of the pellet, they suck the hook in as well. That last one was a big fish. Let me show you how we put these pellets on. 
It's so easy because you've got the you've got the rubber bait band there and just pull it around that eight millimeter pellet. It's as easy as that and it's just if you can see it's just off of that hair rig. I've tied a knot round the hair rig to hold it in place. So there it is, it's just suspended there, as easy as that. Just set the float a bit deeper, it's getting colder and colder and I think the warmer it is, the nearer the fish come to the surface and if you're not getting any signs when you're fishing, just deepen up a little bit, deepen up until you come in contact with the fish. Fishing's, it's, it's well that's why we love fishing because nothing's ever the same. You have to change things, look at conditions and change things as you go through the day. Got the marker that I'm casting to, as long as you keep the rod vertical when you cast and aim at the target then, wind permitting, it goes like that perfectly, perfectly in line just with the end of that bush on the other bank, not sinking the line leaving it on the surface because the wind is not too bad on this bank. And then I'm looking to feed, just put those loose offerings around the float to attract the carp. The noise attracts the carp, but also of course as the bait drops through the water. Try some of the four of these big, big eight mil first. Bomb, 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 around the float area. As long as it's roughly in the region. It's very, very hard when it's, when you get these windy conditions, but as long as it's roughly in the area, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they fall a bit short, because I'm going to pull that float through the baited area. So I'm going to feed. This is roughly the system. It's hard work, because you have to keep doing it. When you're getting fish up in the water, they won't just stay there. As soon as you stop feeding, they'll drop back or they'll go away. So you have to keep working the bait. Just pulling the bait a little bit there, then feeding. So you pull your bait, then you feed. Feed, feed. Pull your bait again. So it's just a continual action until you get the bite. You're looking for the bite, you're looking to attract the fish by noise. Just, just lifting that rod and pulling it, pulling it, just a little bit of movement, just to try and create a situation. And there I got it. But the fish didn't take, but I just got sign that the fish was there. Catching big carp up in the water, the end tackle needs to be very, very strong and without any weak links. This is why I use a connector. It's fitted to the line, two pieces of silicon on your reel line, which pushes over the T-bar. It just locks that in position, the T-bar there. And the link swivel is just if you need to change the pellet waggle you're using. If the wind gets up and you want a bigger one on, or if it goes calmer or the fish come in closer, you can put a smaller one on. Just clip that through there. So it holds the pellet waggler in position there. As I say, you can change it. You can move, alter the depth. Fish may be three foot deep, four foot deep. So you need to alter the depth here. You can lock it in position by taking off one of these pieces of silicon, winding the main line around that stem there, just a couple of turns, and that will really lock it in position if you're throwing a, or casting a long way. And that's what I've done today, I've locked it in position. So that's simple, but very strong, no weaknesses there, nothing to damage the line, no big shots either side of the float. And then you need a swivel, that's a small swivel, say a number 20 swivel, just to attach the hook length to the line. This is the strongest, really, the strongest way, and it stops when you're throwing out a pellet, it can spin around. It just stops it, the line from twisting up. And just attach that by a, a 
tucked half blood knot. That's where you twist it around five times, tuck it, and then you, you sort of bring it back through itself as well. Just tuck it back through itself. Once you've done the knot, just pull it tight, wet it, check it. It's not slipping. It's very easy to tie knots that, that slip. If you don't tuck that blood knot, that will slip. Trim it off. And that's it. I mean, it's fairly simple. Nothing can go wrong, which is what you need when you're catching big fish. Nothing to go wrong. The tackle to be strong all the way through. Main line about 0.24 millimetre. So good strong main line and then a 0.20 millimetre hook length on the other end of that swivel. Perfect for catching big carp on the pellet waggler. <laughs> It's just a matter of continually feeding. It takes, the hardest thing is when you catch a fish. You catch a fish and of course, when, you, when you've got a fish on, you can't feed. So as soon as you get the fish in, you have to build the swim up again. And sort of repeat the process all the time. Just keep that feed going in and the float moving just a little bit. Just pull the float a little bit. Try to get those pellets somewhere near that float, but if they fall short, don't worry. Just pull your float like that into that baited area. And all the time looking for indications on the float that the fish are around. Suddenly the float might just jump and you know there's a fish there. Quite often, just after that little take. The little bit of movements that I'm giving I'm trying to induce a bite as well, just as I pull the float, you can imagine that the pellet will flick up as you pull the float towards you. So I go like that, just pull that float, but the pellet will just lift up a bit and, and wave a little bit. And, and that's quite often enough for the fish to go bang and take it. But it's all, it's all working. You have to keep working all the time, pulling that float back into where the pellets have dropped just into that area all the time and feeding 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 to keep the fish there if you don't keep that bait dropping through the water the fish will disappear so it's a matter of it's just non-stop the only time that you stop feeding is when you catch a fish. What a terrific looking fish. Big fish that. A great one. <laughs> a great one to end the day on. It's almost a leather carp. It hasn't got hardly any scales. Fantastic, just shows you the quality of fish that you can catch when using a pellet waggler. Fabulous, fabulous fishing. See you next time.